I remember when, again, a couple of years ago with COVID, I wrote a piece in The Wave, which is a, a rag in Los Angeles, because I wanted to talk to particularly the older population about the reasons why they should uh, get vaccinated and boosted. And in that article, I did reach back and, and, and again, validate the reasons why. And, and, and we, like you said, have legitimate reasons not to trust the medical establishment for a number of reasons, Tuskegee being one. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And and the one thing that I will say is that I think the medical industry has more work to do. I think one of the things that we need to do is a develop a workforce that looks more like the communities that we're working in. Right. right. So a lot of you know, so there's a lot of you know stuff around, you know, patient doctor racial concordance and and whether or not people are more likely to adhere to whatever their doctors say if the person looks more like them. And then there are studies that say that they're less likely to do that because they feel that level of like this person might be somebody I might see at the grocery store. So I really mm -hmm. may I might not want to tell them that I have mm -hmm. a lot of sex partners or that I'm an active mm -hmm. drug mm -hmm. user or whatever the thing might be. Right. Mm -hmm. And so but the majority of studies show that if the doctor looks more like you or that researcher looks more like you that you're more likely to, to develop a sense of trust. I also, I think developing the workforce is important. I think reaching back to, I'm, I'm not even back, I'm gonna say forward to HBCUs, getting people involved in the research endeavor on any level. I think as researchers, one thing that I do is I don't walk in with the PhD on my jacket. I walk in, I'm Tiffany. Let, let's talk about what's going on with you. Right. Right. And I just, I'm just myself. And by the time that people figure out that I have a PhD, they're like, baby, we're so happy we didn't know. I'm like, because that's not the most important thing. You know, that's literally, they'd be, oh, baby. You're to... And I'm like, no, mama, I'm, you know, it's okay, you know, kind of thing. And so I, so I do think, I think that what we, and another thing that I think we need to do is we need to reach our youth. I think our, the children are our future, like Whitney Houston said. And I think that we need to pull them into the research enterprise because, again, they have a voice and they know how to reach their communities in ways that I'll say even people like myself who are kind of aging out might not mm -hmm. be really up on that game. Like social media, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. you know what I'm right. saying? So I right. think, again, I said we have a reason for the distrust, but I think to build trust, we need to develop the workforce, engage the youth, engage in funding, HBCUs. And again, stop mm -hmm. with this whole, who's getting funding, who's not. You know, I know a mm -hmm. lot of my colleagues looking just like me, writing the same grants, but by the time we do the community engaged work, Mm. That takes years. It takes a long time to really get to know the community if you really love the community. And we don't mm -hmm. do helicopter research. So by the time I develop a relationship with the community, someone so over here done wrote 50 papers, right? And so that's what we're being evaluated on. So it's this race. I'd rather engage the community and really, really have them tell me what I need to do so that I can develop their trust so that we can achieve equity and health. And I think yeah. that's what we need to do.